Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or on the internet. In this episode, of Sunday Reflection segment, we present the homily for the 17th Sunday of the year based on the liturgical readings of the A cycle. The readings of the 17th Sunday of the year dwell on the theme Seeking God's Kingdom First. Dr. Williamson was a British geologist doing some archaeological excavation work in Tanzania. Being a geologist, he had a natural curiosity about rock formations and always looked for and sought after things he had an interest in. One day he was driving in a deserted area, slipping and sliding along a rain-soaked road. Suddenly his four-wheel drive vehicle sang up to its axles in a mud hole and got stuck. Pulling out his shawl, Dr. Williamson began the unpleasant task of digging the car out of the mud hole. He had been at this task for a while when his shawl uncovered something strange. It was a pinkish stone of some sort. He picked it up and wiped away the mud. When the stone was finally clean, Dr. Williamson was overjoyed at what he found, for he had discovered the diamond which came to be known as the famous Pink Diamond of Tanzania and is now set in the royal scepter of Great Britain. The readings and the liturgy of the 17th Sunday of the year call us to be seekers like Dr. Williamson. Seek after God's kingdom and its righteousness, acknowledge its significance in our Christian lives, and cultivate the wisdom to treasure it in our lives, even when its acceptance involves sacrifices. The first reading, taken from the first book of Kings, tells us how young King Solomon, responding to the question of Yahweh, ask for whatever you want me to give you, opted not for any material blessing from Yahweh. Instead, he opted for wisdom and asked for a discerning heart and an understanding mind that would help him to distinguish right from wrong, so that he might govern his people with justice, equity, sensitivity, and compassion. Yahweh was pleased with his request, as Solomon neither asked for long life or wealth for himself, nor he asked for the death of his enemies, but for discernment in administering justice to God's people. Yahweh granted Solomon not only a wise and discerning heart to enable him to surpass everyone in wisdom, but also blessed him with long life, riches, and freedom from enemies. In the second reading, St. Paul in his letter to the Romans says that all things work for good for those who love God and those God foreknew and called according to his purpose. God's foreknowledge and calling implies that God preordained them to be confirmed to Jesus' image so that Jesus becomes the firstborn and all who believe in God and in Jesus become adopted children of God and brothers and sisters of Jesus. Thus, those who are preordained are called to live as true disciples of Jesus, thereby justified and glorified by God in Jesus. Hence, St. Paul asks the Roman Christians to opt for God, choose him above everything else in the world, and to cooperate with God's plans and purposes so that they may be justified and glorified in the kingdom of God. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, Jesus using the images of the one who sells everything to buy the treasure hidden in the field and the merchant who sells everything to buy the pearl of great value 
teaches that the treasure hidden in the field and the pearl of great value for a Christian is none other than Jesus and the values of his kingdom. Hence, we are asked to discover Jesus' vision of life and make it our own, even if it implies that we must give everything else in life a secondary place. St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verse 8, explains this point as follows. I count everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake... I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as refuse in order that I may gain Christ. Thus, in the gospel, Jesus asks us to choose him as the first priority of our lives. For the choice we make now will determine if we become worthy of God when he comes in our lives at the end of time as the judge of the living and the dead. On the 17th Sunday of the year, the readings and the liturgy invite us, firstly, to become wise enough to seek and choose things of eternal value. Often we chase earthly treasures such as money, status, fame, position and pleasure. Similarly, we get locked into the regrets of the past and anxieties of the future, forgetting the enriching present thereby fail to discover things of eternal value. While enjoying this world's joys and pleasures within the framework of God's commandments, let us not forget to seek, find and choose Jesus, our true treasure, by conquering selfishness, overcoming situations of sin and rendering humble service to others. Secondly, the liturgy today calls us to take all precautions to keep Jesus our greatest treasure safe. This implies that we accept Jesus, our God and Savior, at every moment of our lives. That we allow him to take control of our lives by doing his will. That we open our lives to the guidance of the Holy Spirit by our life of prayer, by our reflection on the Word of God, and by our fervent and frequent reception of the sacraments, particularly the sacraments of reconciliation and the Eucharist. Finally, the liturgy today calls us to be constantly aware of the fact that our choices here on earth determine our eternal life at the end of time. Though the final judgment resulting in reward or punishment belongs to the realm of God's choice. Yet our life and actions here on earth do matter at the end of our lives. Hence, we must live our lives guided by Christian virtues of patience, compassion, forgiveness and service of others. In doing so, we can open ourselves to the justification and glorification that is due for living a genuine Christian life. As we move into this new week, let us ask God to give us the grace to choose Jesus and the values of his kingdom as our first priority in our lives. Do everything in our power to let the vision of Jesus influence our lives and to live our lives in such a way that we stand justified when Jesus comes in his glory at the end of time. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.